Oh, here we go, with a tale of family drama and shade, my fellow Reddit peeps. So, picture this. Hubby and I have been hitched for a solid two years, and before that, we were dating for four whole years. He's an absolute gem, like a shining diamond in a sea of rocks, I tell you. But, and there's always a but, his family, oh boy, they're not all bad apples, but they do have this super traditional vibe going on. And here's the kicker. They ain't too thrilled about how modern we are. You feel me? Like, come on, we're living in the 21st century and it's all about embracing change and progress. But they seem stuck in some old timey movie, like back to the 1800s or something. But hey, we roll with the punches because that's what families do, right? We try to make it work and find common ground, and for the most part, it's not so bad. We've got a happy little bubble, and it's all sunshine and rainbows when it's just us two. But let me spill the tea on what happened recently. I was minding my own business strolling around our cozy little home when I accidentally overheard something that had me shook to my core. I walked in on them talking smack about yours truly, and can you believe it? They were saying their precious son could do better than me. Seriously, guys? I couldn't believe my ears. Like, hello? I'm not some second-rate rom-com character. I'm me, and I'm awesome, and I'm married to their precious baby boy for a reason. It's not like we got hitched in some arranged marriage for crying out loud. I tried to keep my cool, but trust me, I was fuming inside. How could they say such things about me, especially when they act all sugary sweet to my face? It's like they're hiding behind those traditional masks while secretly judging me from behind their fancy fans. So, rewind to a few years back before Hubby and I even tie the knot. His family was going through some tough times, like hanging by a thread tough. And me, being the caring and compassionate soul I am, I swooped in like a superhero with a cape and saved the day. You see, they were facing some financial woes and were on the verge of losing their home. But fear not, for I came to the rescue. I lent them a helping hand, provided some much-needed financial support, and basically prevented them from becoming homeless. You'd think they'd be eternally grateful, right? Wrong. These people have some selective memory issues, I swear. Fast forward to the present day and they're acting all high and mighty like my hubby's achievements are somehow not linked to mine. Like, really? So when I reminded them of the time I saved their sorry butts from living on the streets, they looked surprised, like they had conveniently forgotten that part of the story. And then they had the nerve to laugh in my face. Like, are you kidding me? Talk about slap in the face, right? It was a real eye-opener, let me tell you. I had thought we were a family, that we had each other's backs. But apparently, my good deeds were nothing more than an afterthought to them. So, after their audacious laughter and snarky comments, I couldn't just let it slide. I had to get to the bottom of this like a detective on a mission. I went straight to my husband and confronted him about his family's behavior, and let me tell you, he was acting all sorts of weird, dodging the topic, asking me to let it go, but oh no, that's not how I roll. I knew something was fishy and I wasn't about to back down, so instead of letting it simmer, I took matters into my own hands and decided to go straight to the source, his family. I sat them down, looked them square in the eyes, and asked them what the heck was going on. And of course, I didn't miss the chance to remind them of the time I came to their rescue when they were on the verge of losing their home. I mean, it's not something you easily forget, right? But you won't believe what they said. They had the nerve to accuse me of lying and claiming it was their precious son who did it all. Hold up, wait a minute. Did my husband just conveniently forget to even mention that it was me who helped them out? I mean, come on, we're talking about a significant event here, not something you'd casually overlook. It's like they've got selective amnesia or something. I was filled with anger, and rightfully so. 
To think that I had been there for them in their time of need and they couldn't even acknowledge my efforts? It was like a punch to the gut. I asked him straight up, why on earth would he let them think it was all him when it was me who saved their behinds from financial ruin? And you won't believe what he said. Brace yourselves, folks. He claimed we weren't married back then, just dating, and he couldn't spill the beans. Uh, hold up. That's no excuse, buddy. I mean, we've been together for ages and we're married now. What's the big secret? It's not like I'm asking him to reveal some classified government information or the secret to the universe. But here's where it got real suspicious. He started begging me to let it go. Begging, can you believe it? I felt something was off, like a puzzle piece that just didn't fit. Why would he beg me to drop it like a hot potato? It's not like we're hiding stolen treasure in our backyard or anything. It's a simple matter of acknowledging the truth and giving credit where credit is due. And you know what really got to me? His family, despite their occasional mean streak, had accepted me into their clan. So what's the harm in telling them the truth? If anything, it would have been a moment of bonding and appreciation. But nope. He made me promise, swear and all, that I wouldn't go snooping around or confront his family about it. And trust me, I'm not one to break a promise, but this whole situation was just too fishy for my liking. Update 1. Remember how I promised not to snoop around or spill the beans to my husband's family? Well, I'll admit it, I did a little detective work behind his back. I couldn't let this mystery go, and boy am I glad I didn't. So here's the deal. I went straight to his family and spilled everything like a secret agent unveiling classified information. And let me tell you, they were shocked, to say the least. Turns out my dear husband, Mr. Perfect, was dating someone named Zola back then. You heard me right, Zola. And guess what? He was dating her while he was also dating me. Cue the gasps and dramatic music, because this is where it gets real juicy. My jaw dropped to the floor when I found out. I mean, who would have thought my seemingly loving and devoted husband was juggling two relationships at the same time? I felt like I was in some crazy soap opera. But nope, this was my reality, and I was not about to let it slide. His family was in total shock. They had no idea about any of this, and I could see their trust in him being shattered into a million pieces. Honestly, it was a moment of mixed emotions for me. Anger, hurt, betrayal, you name it. But I had to be strong, not just for myself, but also for his family. They deserved to know the truth. Even if it was an unpleasant one, it was a tough pill to swallow, but it had to be done. My husband's little secret was out in the open and there was no going back. So here we are in the aftermath of the bombshell. His family is processing everything and I'm trying my best to navigate through this whirlwind of emotions. As for my husband, well, he's got some explaining to do. I'm not one to be played for a fool and he's got a lot of work to do if he wants to earn back my trust. Stay tuned, Reddit, because this is far from over. I'm not backing down. Update 2. I finally confronted my husband about this little secret, and guess what? He was speechless, utterly and completely caught off guard. Oh, he didn't expect me to ever find out about his double life. I mean, who would have thought, right? My heart felt like it was ripped into a thousand pieces, betrayed, hurt, and left wondering how on earth he could do this to me. Two-timing, cheating, whatever you want to call it, it's a low blow and I wasn't about to sweep it under the rug. In the middle of my pain and anger, I made a decision, a tough one, but one that I knew was necessary for my sanity. I needed space time away from him and all the drama that came with it. So I packed my bags and moved out. Yep, you heard me right. I walked away from the life we built together, at least for the time being. He begged me not to go, but I needed to do this for myself. 
I needed to heal, to process everything that had happened and to figure out what I wanted for my future. And let me tell you, it's not easy. Walking away from someone you once loved and trusted with your whole heart, it's a pain that cuts deep. But sometimes you've got to be your own hero and that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm taking control of my life, not letting anyone else dictate my happiness. Update three. Update number three is here and it's all about new beginnings and finding my own path, my own peace. So after packing my bags and moving out, I decided it was time for a fresh start. I took a new job in a different city, a city that held the promise of a new chapter in my life. And boy, was it a tough decision to make. Every day, my husband would beg me to come back to give our marriage another chance. But you know what? I needed this time away. I needed space to breathe, to heal, and to figure out what I really wanted. I told him that I was seriously contemplating the divorce, but even if we didn't go through with it, we were unofficially separated for now. I needed to live peacefully by myself, to find my own strength and identity once again. And let me tell you, it's been a journey of self-discovery. Living alone has given me the space I needed to reflect on my life and my choices. I've been able to reconnect with old hobbies and passions that I had put aside during my marriage. I've met some new people and made new friends who have reminded me of the strong, independent woman I used to be. I'm not shutting the door on the possibility of reconciliation entirely. Life is unpredictable and who knows what the future holds. But for now, I'm choosing to focus on myself, my healing and my growth. NTA. Oh my God, you go girl. Taking charge of your life and putting yourself first. That's what it's all about. Your husband's shady fam and his betrayal are total red flags. And you did the right thing by moving out and taking that new job. You deserve so much better than being treated like that. Live your best life. Focus on yourself and don't let anyone bring you down. You've got this. and We're here rooting for you all the way. NTA, wow, that's a tough situation to be in. It's so messed up that your husband's fam were talking behind your back and didn't appreciate everything you did for them. And his cheating, oh, major yikes. Moving out and taking time for yourself sounds like a smart move. You deserve to be happy and treated with respect. Take all the time you need to figure things out and don't rush into anything. Remember, your happiness is what matters most. Stay strong, and we're sending you all the positive vibes. Next story. So I, 16 female, pursued my dream of becoming a baker. I started a business during quarantine, and I started baking pastries and cakes when I was nine. I always make cakes for my family and friends, but I do sometimes charge my friends if the cake takes longer than four hours and if the decorations are expensive and they seem okay with it. Anyways, my uncle's birthday party was just yesterday and I finished making a cake for him the night before. I had decided to make a cake separate for the kids and for the adults, so I made a chocolate ganache cake for the kids. I will be at the kids' table and a cake with alcohol for the adults. The cakes both looked exactly the same. White frosting and chocolate sprinkles for the adult cake. With permission from my parents, I took 10 beers and put them making a circle shape. I put fondant over them and then covered it all in frosting. To be honest, the kids' cake looked more appetizing than the adult one, but it was fine. Anyways, we arrived at their house and all was going well. An hour after lunch, my aunt and uncle cut the kids' cake for the kids. And after everyone, including me, got a slice, I went to the car to get the cake with beer. My uncle cut through the middle and took out all the beers. He was laughing while everyone stood there in shock. This is my dad's side of the family. My aunt started to scream and berate me, saying how I ruined her husband's cake and how I was only 16 and shouldn't give them the adult beer when they could have bought it themselves. My parents stepped in and said that she had done it before with her other aunt and nobody cared. 
They then started screaming at my parents saying how they failed to raise me and how it wasn't fair that the kids got an actual cake and the adults got a foolish joke from a 16-year-old girl. We shortly went home and I kept getting nasty messages from my aunt saying how I crossed the line and how I'm disgusting. So am I TA? I feel like TA because... I think I might have ruined my uncle's birthday party. I had no bad intention to get on my auntie's nerves, so I don't know what to do anymore. I just feel so guilty. NTA. While your aunt may not have found the joke appropriate, her reaction was over the top. Your uncle thought it was funny, and his reaction, as the one you are celebrating, is the reaction that truly matters. Opinion 2. NTA, you had your parents' permission. Your uncle was laughing and thought it was funny. The only question is whether or not there was enough cake for everyone from the kids' cake. Regardless of what your aunt thought, her reaction was massively out of line. Everyone isn't going to like every joke. That's fine. But when she opened her mouth, she was a really big a-hole. You don't parent someone else's kid right in front of their parents. You don't get to yell at a kid who made something for her uncle, even if it's the worst thing in the world. And you don't yell at someone in front of others in the middle of a birthday party. She threw a massive tantrum and you need to make sure you're not alone with her in the future. Uncle too, because you used the word they when you said they started yelling at your parents, so it sounds like your uncle switched courses here. Next story. 28, female. A fiancé is 29, male. We found out we were pregnant eight months ago. I'm due on Valentine's Day. This is our first child together and our nerves peaked last month during it because he was laid off unexpectedly. He was a manager at a dispensary and his best friend was the owner. The company slowly started hitting the red, so the guys were really pushing their promoting and getting investors, etc. But it got to a point there where my fiancé wasn't paid for a month because the company simply didn't have the funds to pay their employees. He stuck it out with no fuss because he said he knew the company would make it. And it did. But as soon as they got back into the green, his friend laid him off and told him the cut was necessary for budgeting. My fiancé was then paid all his back paychecks in product, weed, dabs, etc. And my fiancé accepted it because it's his friend. I was fuming, but there wasn't much I could do. I don't think any real friend would have done what he did. We have been full on struggling since that point. He has tried getting on unemployment but was denied. Not sure why, because he was with the company for over two years. Both of us have been applying to multiple different positions and don't even get so much as a rejection email. Just zero response out of the hundreds of apps we have sent out combined. We own our house outright and only pay land tax, so that's not as much of an issue, but we have a baby coming. Like, this is a huge deal and we have no money to our name right now. Our accounts are literally overdrawn. I've been selling off our stuff just to get by. But regardless, my mother-in-law and my mom threw us a baby shower on Saturday. My fiancé's incredibly wealthy aunt and uncle showed up. They have like six houses own three companies, no kids, and they live out of state. When we got around to opening their gift, it was a check for $30,000. They stated that they were getting older now and are trying to put their wealth forward and help people in need, and they knew we needed it. They said multiple times that it was pocket change to them because my fiancé immediately said he couldn't take it. And I understand why it would be hard to. I truly do. That's a lot of money and I would be conflicted as well. But we needed this and they were adamant about it being pocket change and kept expressing that they have so much money that they don't know what to do with it. And they wanted to help us more than that, but figured my fiance would have said no. So they dropped it to a smaller amount. He outright refused to take it. And as dramatic as it sounds, it truly ruined my entire day, and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. We desperately needed it. He could have 
started a business and paid his uncle back and I told him that. He immediately told me to drop it and that it wasn't my place, but I stood firm and said, this was our out in a hard time and you said no due to your own pride? Pride doesn't buy freaking diapers. He's saying I'm in the wrong because it's his family and he has the right to say no. NTA at all. Family dynamics and egos are tough. Egos and pride are also tough. 1. Your husband should have insisted on being paid with actual cash from his job. Weed and abs are cool for college kids, but he has a freaking baby on the way, and that only benefits one person, the person ingesting or smoking it. Not you or the baby. 2. When you literally have no money, you can't be picky about where it comes from. Perhaps you can make contact with the aunt and set up a little fund for baby with the understanding that the use of the money will improve the child's life. If your husband insists on not taking it, perhaps you can ask rich auntie and uncle to set up the fund and give you access. His ego is preventing his child from having a stable environment. Do what is best for your child and your family. Baby's health and security has to come first. NTA. I get where he's coming from, but he needs to be realistic and his family is offering both of you that security, not just him. He rejected the help they were offering you as well. Next story. Some background. I tend to work on the dining table and leave my computer there. My husband does not do stuff at the table and tends to put my computer in the basket where we store paper trash. I don't like that, but don't argue with it and just take it out later. We divided chores and he is in charge of taking the trash out, which among other things involves putting the paper from the basket in the big paper trash bin we have outside. What happened? I have been looking for my computer for several days. Finally, I asked him for help. He kindly was looking for it in the house. He asked me if I looked in the paper trash bin outside. I told him no, as I would never put it there. It didn't occur to me it could be there. He looked there, and it was indeed there. He must have thrown it there with the paper trash. I was very angry about that. He was angry at me and said I should be thankful for finding it for me. That next time he won't bother trying to find my stuff. My computer's display doesn't work anymore now. The fall in the bin and the moisture and being outside for several days have damaged it. I will have to buy a new one and ask him to pay for the value of a similar computer, same build year. He will do so but said that it is not clear that this is because of the bin situation. I think it is because it was fine before. He also says that I caused it myself because I tried switching on the computer immediately after which apparently is bad that I should have known. I don't know much about computers. He does and was there when I tried to switch it on but did not try to stop me at all. So I think that it's not fair. He's never apologized and says he is disappointed in me. I think he's in the wrong. A-I-T-A? E-T-A. He also puts other things in the paper basket, also his own stuff. It's a bad storage place, but not as malicious as it appears. Also, I really don't believe he noticed he threw it away. He can be passive aggressive, but is not a sociopath trying to punish me or something. NTA. Divorce, babes. Divorce. In all seriousness, there's several red flags here. Was he seriously that negligent that he didn't notice what exactly he was placing in the bin? Secondly, his earnest misrepresentation and subsequently blaming you caused the damage and the you should have known is a major problem that needs to be addressed. He can't even be bothered to respect your things or your job for that matter. NTA, to reframe, he doesn't like you leaving your computer on the table so he packs it up and puts it with the recycling. That passive aggressive move didn't make you stop. So he knowingly threw your computer in the bin then he watched you look for it for a week, again passive aggressive, until you specifically asked him for help, at which point he was able to tell you exactly where it was because again he did this on purpose.
Then he blamed you for the damage because you didn't, checks notes, learn from his previous passive aggressive a-hole behavior. He's punishing you for his own actions. This is manipulative, abuse, and gross. Throw him out the way he tried to throw out your computer. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.